Good evening, church. Welcome to worship on this January 20th. The weather has changed. It's a little chilly here in the sanctuary because we're missing all of you filling our pews, but we're hopeful that soon uh, the vaccine can be mass produced and given to people so that we can soon gather in our sanctuary again. But tonight, God gathers us just as we are in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together this Wednesday evening in our, in our call to worship. We start together. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven, who knew you and chose you before the world began, who loves you so much that he calls you his own children, who has brought you from darkness into light and filled you with his glorious power, who has prepared an inheritance for you that will never spoil or fade who encourages and strengthens you in every good deed and word, who comforts you in your trouble so that you can comfort others. This is our God, the ultimate source of all things and the one for whom we live. Let's worship God together. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, 
and with all my strength. Let us pray. Gracious God, the giver of all good gifts, we come before you in worship tonight, thanking you for being our God and for you calling us to be your children. Help us to lay down any burdens or worries here in worship today and be uplifted by your good news, your word of claiming us as your own. Bless us in our worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In this new year, we get to welcome new members to our community of faith, brothers and sisters who God has created and sustained and now blessed us to be in partnership with. We will be changed by them joining uh, this community of fellowship, and we thank them uh, for their service and for our partnership moving forward. So now, uh, um, be a part of the worship service as we welcome these new members to Calvary. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, and we can all respond together with this. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, creator of, of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus in Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, 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 suffered under Pontius Pilate, 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 was crucified, and died, and died and was buried. He descended, he descended to the, to the dead. dead. On the third On the day, third he, day rose he rose again. again. He ascended into, he into heaven. heaven. He is seated at the right, hand, at the right hand, hand of the Father. He will come, he to, will judge come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy the Catholic, Catholic, Church, Catholic Church, the communion, the communion of, saints, of saints, the forgiveness, the forgiveness of, sins, of sins, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, of the body life and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God has made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, 
to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, I do, I do and, and I ask, ask God, God to help, help and guide, guide me. me. People of God, do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Len and Kathy and Jake and Katie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen indeed. Well, church, we'll take some time now to collect our gifts and offerings. Again, uh, many ways that you can do this. You can go on our website and find the Rebel Give uh, icon that will take you to our uh, giving platform online. You can also mail in any offerings or drop them here by the church. Door 6 is always open. A reminder that this month, Churches United is our offering partner, and it is a great ministry here in town that really meets the stranger as Christ. If you have any gifts to pass along to them, um, like the little lotions that we've collected before that they can hand out, or, or any kind of uh, toiletry items, or we are going to take those at the end of the month, as well as your monetary donations that really help them further their mission and ministry. We have two more teaching times tonight and next week for confirmation as we continue to dive into the Apostles' Creed. And then we'll have a time of um, just a little Sabbath rest where the, the youth will um, prepare for a test and take that test at home uh, over uh, the catechism. And for the adults that have uh, joined us in, joined in for this, thank you for joining us. We'll have a little break and then we will pick up a new way uh, to connect in Lent. We are going to read a book together called The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr. Uh, unity will be our theme for Lent. You're invited to read the book, listen to some podcasts, and of course, uh, have worship as well uh, during our time of Lent together. There will be no Lent mentoring. Uh, we're changing up a little bit just to keep everyone safe. On Sunday, we'll be gathering for worship as well. And on the 31st, we're back in our parking lot, and that is also the day of our annual meeting. So again, confirmation students and families, if you're going to be around at 1 o'clock on the 31st, we could use parking attendance and help us uh, with our annual meeting as well. Let's now turn our hearts and minds to the power of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the many blessings you give us in this life. We thank you for the faith you've put in each one of us. Help us to believe in your word. Help us to live out our vocations. And help us, God, to be strengthened by your presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for saints of old. We thank you for people like Martin Luther who wrestled with your word, Lord, who, who went to write things down to teach the faith in the homes and in churches everywhere. We ask, God, that you continue to instill in us a desire to learn, to grow deeper. We thank you for confirmation guides, for parents, for students, for this entire congregation that's engaged in this study this year. May we continue to be your fruits in this world bringing about your peace and justice wherever we go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also ask, God, that you bless us with good weather. We thank you for the snow and how it beautifies the earth. For anyone adversely affected by this weather, Lord, we ask for, for healing and help to come. We pray, God, for all vocations during this time, for those who are on the road, deployed from family, and those who are close to home, working from home, that you bless us in our work and in our play. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray today for newly elected leaders in our nation, in our states, here locally, and also in our church. May you continue to rise up leaders who lead with justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, God, for all those affected by COVID-19, for those who are slowly reopening, opening their doors again for business, for education, and so much more. May you bless us, Lord, and continue to help us be vigilant so that all can stay well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us, Lord, in all that we do each and every day. May our actions and deeds glorify you. And now hear us as we unite our voices sharing the prayer you taught your children to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe, we believe In this broken generation when all is dark, you help us see There is only one salvation We believe, we believe We believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death we believe in the resurrection and he's coming back again we believe so Let's see. So let our faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing. And in our weakness and temptations, we believe. Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. Let the lost be found, and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church live loud Our God will say we believe, we believe And the gates of hell will not prevail For the power of God has torn the veil Now we know your love will never fail We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death we believe in the resurrection and he's coming back he's coming back again he's coming back again 
We believe, we believe. Hey everyone, welcome to Teaching Time as we dive into our second to last teaching of this year. Hard to believe. It's gone pretty quick in some ways, in other ways not so much, but uh, today we're going to learn a little bit more about the Apostles' Creed. Now by way of review, just to catch us back up to where we were last week, remember that we talked about the first article of the Creed, which has to do with God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth, right? So we talked about how God is the Creator of everything and everyone and how everything that exists is part of God's good creation. And today, we're going to the second part of the creed, which is about Jesus. Now, this is a little bit of a longer section, and we're going to talk through the entirety of it, but just to give you an idea of what we're going to be looking at, let's look at what the second article of the creed is, and we'll read through it together. Okay, second article of the creed says, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. That is a mouthful, right? A lot of stuff to talk about there. So before we dive into all of that, I want to go over a couple of words that are in that paragraph, some that are familiar, some that might be less so, just so that we're all talking about the same thing and can understand what we mean when we're talking about these things. So our vocab words for this week, our definitions, are Christ and Pontius Pilate. Now, Christ is a word that we're generally familiar with, right? We talk about Jesus Christ. But what does it mean? Why do we say Jesus the Christ? Well, contrary to popular belief, Christ is not actually Jesus' last name, right? It's a title. It's kind of like uh, a lord or king or savior. These are words that describe a position that someone is in. Christ is similar. The word Christ comes from a Greek word that is basically uh, the same as Messiah. It means anointed one, someone who is established by God to be the bearer of something, of good news, of leading in something that is powerful and new. Uh, And so when we say Jesus Christ, we're referring to what Jesus does, right? Who Jesus is. It's his office. It's the the role that he is in. Uh, And the second word we have is a name. Pontius Pilate. Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. What's, what's, a, what's a pilot? What's a Pontius Pilate? Does that have to do with flying something? No, this is a different kind of pilot. It's actually a name of a Roman governor. He was the, the, the governor of Judea who was the presider over the trial of Jesus on Good Friday. Uh, and so when we say Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate, we're referring to a specific event that happens during Holy Week. Uh, that Pilate was the person who basically was the judge uh, when the people brought Jesus before him and said, we want you to put him to death because of X, Y, and Z. And so uh, he was the figure that we talk about uh, in Scripture. So Pontius Pilate is the governor uh, that was in place during Jesus' ministry. Now, before we dive any deeper into the actual piece of the creed, let's look at our Bible verse for today. Familiar one for a lot of people. This is John 3.16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And that's a really good verse for us to memorize, even if it wasn't on the test, which it will be, but even if it wasn't, it's still a great one to memorize because it's often seen as the gospel in miniature, right? It tells this basic story of what's happening with this Jesus guy. Why is he here? Well, he's being sent by God as the Christ, the Messiah, to save us from our sins so that we who believe in him may not perish but have eternal life. It's that, again, gospel in miniature. And part of why I picked this text for our second article stuff is that the second article of the creed 
is also, in a lot of ways, the gospel in miniature. It talks about who Jesus is. It's kind of an elevator pitch. If you ever are stuck in an elevator with someone and they say, well, what's Jesus about? What's the Christian belief about Jesus? You can basically recite to them the second article of the creed. Kim, you want to back up a couple slides so we can see that again? What it says about, yeah, right there. So who is Jesus? Well, he's God's only son. He's our Lord. Uh, and what did he do? Well, he's conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of Virgin Mary, born into a stable. He suffered under this guy, Pontius Pilate. And then he was crucified and he died and he was buried and he descended to the dead. He was gone. But then on the third day, God rose him, raised him. He was rose, risen again, and he ascended into heaven. This is the story of Jesus in miniature form. So also, good to memorize the Apostles' Creed, because then if anyone asks you who Jesus is, you can read or recite this. So I want to talk a little bit about a couple of these things. So we talk about Jesus being God's only Son, our Lord. Well, is Jesus God's son or is Jesus God? That's confusing, right? Well, it is a bit confusing. We have this thing in Christianity called the Trinity. It's kind of one of the symbols of the Trinity right here. It shows we have three parts to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We talk about those things in worship a lot. We'll say in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. This is what we're talking about. There are three distinct parts of God and they're all God at the same time. So it's one of those strange but exciting things where we say, yes, Jesus is both God's Son, God's presence on earth, and as that, he is part of God. Now, the first two lines of the creed, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, talk about two important things. Now, we recognize this, right? It's the manger scene. That's where Jesus is born from Mary. He's human, right? He's born to human parents. But at the same time, he's, as it says, conceived by the Holy Spirit. It's not just a regular human being. He's also fully part of that trinity, fully God. Something that we're going to talk a little bit more about in the small group, but it's an important thing to realize that we're making a pretty huge claim when we say this that not only is Jesus God, he's also human in everything that means. Born of the Virgin Mary. He's someone who was part of this human life we share, fully God and fully human. And he suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. Was crucified, died, and was buried. So what is crucifixion, right? This is this incredibly painful way that someone was, was executed, someone was put to death by being nailed to this, this wooden beam. And he's, this, 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 Jesus goes through this in order to pay the price of sin, of the sin of the entire world born on the cross, put into a tomb, right? Dies and is buried. And then the most extravagant thing that probably is ever said in the creed or anything else, we make the claim that Jesus rose again on the third day. Now, we talk about that. We say it in church a lot. We're used to saying, you know, Jesus rose again. But we have to remember what a big deal this is. What an incredible statement that would have been, especially at the time of Jesus, to say that someone rose from the dead is an absolutely astonishing statement. And so when we recite the creed and we say that Jesus rose from the dead, we're making a claim that not only is Jesus God and human, but if he died and rose from the dead, that means that God died, right? That God gave of God's self in such a sacrificial way that he experienced death until he rose again. And that through that resurrection, we get to be included as people who are adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ and this Trinity, we are made part of the kingdom of God. So these are things that when we say the creed and we talk about Jesus, are important for us to remember that Jesus is God. 
Lord of all, fully God, fully human, who came, died, and rose in order that we might be part of what God is up to, that we might be redeemed from all the things that hold us back. Uh, And all of that is captured in this miniature part of the gospel, this second article of the creed that we say each time we gather in worship. So, we're going to break into small groups, talk a little more in-depth about this, but just to focus in on that a little more, spend some time memorizing both both the John 3.16 text and this article of the creed so that we can recite it together in worship all the time. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.